Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. Hello and welcome to another episode of Before My Time. I am your host, Gelsey Laurie, and we are, as always, joined by our beautiful friend, producer, and co-host, Matt Kelly, and we are going to talk about the Salem Witch Trials. <laughs> So come on, sing along. Just a couple days ago, the long-awaited sequel to Hocus Pocus came out. I know. And I don't think that that's the reason why we're talking about the Salem Witch Trials, but it feels like a good enough reason to be talking about the Salem Witch Trials. Oh, let's be honest. It is. People of Salem, listen. (laughs) Yeah, you know, and it's funny enough, it's in my notes that I was like, and then in 1692, the Sanderson sisters were murdered, <laughs> executed, and hung by neck for being a witch. So you yeah. threw fake facts into your otherwise very well researched. I did. I actually go into depth things. about Thackeray Binks. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very interesting upbringing. He did. I mean, have you heard the interview I did uh, recently with the children of the Hocus Pocus movie that did? Include the voice actor who played Thackeray. Wait, what? No. Yeah, at a convention, I was asked to moderate the Hocus Pocus panel. So it was the actors who played Max and Allison, and then the voice of Thackeray Banks. What? Why did I not know about this? I'm like flipping my shit right now. Let me see how much I... So all I really know about the Salem Witch Trials, in all honesty, besides like movies that are very, very, very loosely inspired by them, is The Crucible. Mm -hmm. That is the extent of my knowledge from what I understand, like the Salem witch trials specifically, like there were probably witch trials happening everywhere, but Salem was kind of, if I'm remembering properly, like the biggest massacre of seemingly innocent people Mm -mm. over witchcraft. So oh. wrong. It's one of the least. Yeah. It's um really? one of the most famous, but only 20 people died. Only 20. I mean, that's still boohoo for them. I'm really that's sorry still, and sad. Yeah, but-, but yeah, it was only 20. It's it's not as huge. 200, over 200 were accused and about 150 of them were arrested, but only 20 were executed. And it's not as big as, yeah, it's kind of that. It just, for some reason, it became the most famous. And I think it's because of the trials and the craze and kind of um, what would you call hysteria of it. And the town is just kind of forever held this curse of being remembered for that. And they're just like, well, fucks. Now they go with it. And they're like, come see our museum. And it kind of actually to tie it into last week's episode, the Salem witch trials kind of very beautifully could be represented by your number one Twilight Zone episode, the Ma- the monsters are due on Maple Street. Absolutely, as another example of just a town turning against becoming, itself. Yeah, turning against itself and becoming fixated on an invisible threat. So, how did it start? What was what was like the kickoff moment for the witch trial? Oh, it's great. It's it's better than you'd think. So, um just to go back, it did start in the spring of 1692 in the lovely town of Salem. I do want to go back. We were kind of talking about like the different witch crazes is that this being 1692, there was a huge witch hunt, witch craze in Europe which was from the 1300s to the end of the 1600s. And so while um and that was mostly women executed that's going to be probably your bulk of executions for witchcraft and where you hear a lot of the like i'm not a witch yeah she's a witch burner <laughs> like and um you know a lot more kind of that idea of burned at the stake um which by popular belief 
uh, no one was burnt as being a witch really? in Salem. That did not. That is, they were hung. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the more European idea. There was actually – there's like a mini docu-series on Netflix about witch hunts, and I think it's more of Europe's witch hunts. And I actually couldn't – it was some years ago, and I couldn't finish it because I was like, I'm going to throw up. Like it was just like the torture and stuff. They did too good of a job where I was like, I can't watch this. But okay, anyway, Salem. So Salem is already dealing with – a lot of bullshit, right? Okay, so there was recently um, a war between Britain and France in the American colonies in 1689, and a lot of refugees ended up coming to Salem. And so they were kind of overrun with that, and the resources were starting to go scarce because of that. There was a recent smallpox epidemic, which then later someone was like, you did it. You're a witch and the smallpox was you because it's just an easy way to blame everything. Like now anything that goes wrong yeah. in my life, I'm going to be like, witchcraft blasphemy. <laughs> like it's just a great thing to accuse. And they also were very scared of neighboring Native Americans attacking. And yeah, so there's there's already a lot of tension going on in Salem. And I didn't actually know this, but there are two Salems at this time. Um, and there were, were rivalries between the two. There was Salem Village, which is present-day Danvers, and then Salem Town, which is present-day Salem. And Salem Town was much more affluent, and they had a lot more money and kind of up blah, 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 blah. And Salem Village was a lot more your farmers, your Puritans, and a lot more poor. And so it was actually the v Salem Village that started accusing people in the town. So it was like the poor people were kind of like, they're a witch. And oh, okay. it kind of became a social class. I think a lot of these accusations too later, you know, some people do, I mean, they very much did believe that the devil was present and at work and everyone thoroughly believed that people were practicing in witchcraft were witches and and whatnot. But it for some people, it kind of gave a reason to start accusing families they had feuds with and this, that. And it, it you know, there there was a bit of that. But the beginning starts in January of 1692 when nine-year-old Elizabeth Paris and 11-year-old Abigail Williams, who is the daughter and the niece of Samuel Paris, who is the minister of Salem, they um, – began having fits. They were violently contorting, uncontrollable screaming outbursts, hallucinations, basically looking like they were possessed. And a local doctor diagnosed them with bewitchment, which – because that's that's a diagnosis, right? Um, glad that the doctors were like, I know what this is. My medical opinion, witchcraft. You're bewitched. And then a little after that time, a lot of the girls were beginning to display the same behavior in Salem Town. So again, we're getting these crazy outbursts, this, that. I remember the first time I learned about the Salem Witch Trials. Mm, I think it was 12 when I went to Salem. And I literally remember like hearing this and I was like, so maybe they were just hitting puberty and they were starting to PMS <laughs> for the first time in their lives, which basically that's what this sounds like. Uncontrollable, violent scream, screaming outbursts and contorting and seeing. I was like, eh, they're about the right age. Um, but the two girls, Abigail and... Elizabeth, who went by Betty, accused three women of witchcraft and bewitching them. So they kind of just got this heed to point a finger, these two young girls. And the three that they did, they're the Paris' home Caribbean slave, Tituba, Sarah Good, and Sarah Osborne were all accused of witchcraft. And they were brought to court, and there was a huge spectacle about it. And this is what the Crucible focuses on is this trial. And um, the two girls were there, and they were outbursts and screaming fits and contorting and, and putting on the whole thing, whether now they're playing into it and kind of feeding off of it or still – actually having these fits. Who knows? I wasn't there. Or was I? Turns out I'm a witch and never died. It's because I eat the souls of little children. Anyways, moving on. Um, <laughs> so both both of the Sarahs denied that they're a witch because they're like, fuck you. I'm not a witch. You bitches be crazy. Well, I might be a bitch, but I'm not a witch. That is a f actual quote from what they said in the court. And um, Tuchuba confessed and she said that other witches were working for her. She was working for the devil, blah, blah, blah. And it kind of comes at a point when she got pushed so far that she's like, fuck this. I'm just going to confess. I, this isn't working. That actually saved her. And this is kind of the bizarre thing about these trials. We're very unconventional of what we know a trial now. It's let's look at the evidence. 
if they're guilty, you get charged. If you're not guilty, then you get released. Well, in this case, the ones that confessed to being a witch and pointed a finger at the next witch were actually spared. The ones that did not confess guilty and were like, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. They're like, cool, let's hang you, which is really fucked up. The whole thing's fucked up. Like, You know what? I I did know that, and I forgot about that mm-hmm. until you just mentioned it. But yeah, that was the other really fucking weird thing, right? That they like- They're so dumb. That if you're just like, yep, I was a witch, then they're just like, all right, you can live. Like, <laughs> like I definitely was- would have just been like, yes, I am a witch. Like, Which yes, I, I think am. That, that was the whole that was the whole point of the crucible, right? Like in the story of the crucible, that it was like I'd rather I'd rather die being true to myself than say something that isn't necessarily true. Mm-mm, Don't know if me. I agree with that sentiment. Fuck <laughs> yeah. that, not me. I will tell you whatever you want to believe if that's gonna keep me alive. If someone has a gun to my head, what do you want me to say? I will say it. Yeah, the crucible also kind of is obviously about this trial and the witch hunts and whatnot, but it is a reflection and social comment to what was going on at the time. Because Arthur Miller wrote it, who I spoke about in the Marilyn Monroe episode, who was Marilyn Monroe's husband for a period of time. Um, He was accused of communism when there was kind of a quote unquote witch hunt in Hollywood in the 50s for communists. And so the the crucible is a direct reflection of what was going on in Hollywood at the time as well. Yeah. Which Salem did make the term like because it was so unethical and later they they realized that it was wrong and I'll get into that and they were like, "Whoops, sorry." That now when anything is kind of out of due justice or suspicion and kind of ridiculous, we do call it a witch hunt, you know, we're like, "Oh, it's it's this like witch hunt and, and blah blah blah." And back to even uh, the Twilight Zone episode, it's it becomes this witch hunt where they need to find somebody that they can blame. But anyway, so um, Chichuba confesses and hysteria spreads. A number of others are accused, including this is really sad. So Sarah Good, excuse me, um, Sarah Good, one of the two Sarahs that were originally accused, her four-year-old daughter was oh. accused of witchcraft. Like how ridiculous – can we actually get pretty ridiculous um but the trials started to overwhelm the courts and in may of 1692 the new governor of massachusetts william phillips ordered an establishment of a special court of oyer and terminer which means to hear and to decide on witchcraft so this is specifically now there are courts and trials just for witchcraft the court's first conviction was june 2nd about um on bridget bishop and she was hanged eight days later in what would become known as the Gallo Hills of Salem Town. Now, Bridget, it's kind of – the people that were accused were kind of all over the place of, you know, some were high class. And I think people were just trying to get back at them. And some were more so of like the outcasts where I think it was Sarah Good was very poor. You know, she was a single mother to this four-year-old daughter who also apparently is a little – little witch. Bridget Bishop was the first to be executed and she was known to kind of rebel against the puritanical values of the time. She would stay out for long hours, have people at her home late at night. She hosted drinking and gambling parties. Um, She'd been married three times and was accused of bewitching her third husband to death. And unfortunately, she was later acquitted due to lack of evidence, but she was already dead. So that's cute. I like when they do that when people are already dead and they're that. like, we're going to drop yeah. all charges. And I'm like, it's a bit late for that, wouldn't yeah. you say? <laughs> we're a little late to the party on that. So let me ask a question because I know that like this is at a time when when society was dumb. a little bit different than society is today. They yeah, were well, fucking I mean, dumb. Just let's be real. They were stupid. as. F- I was reading this and I was like, these people are just so dumb. So, so while all of this insanity is happening in Salem. Like, is there any real report on like what the rest of the United States had to say at the time? Like, did, was everyone else just kind of along for the ride or were they like, you got to check out this dumb shit that's happening up in Salem where they're letting the people that (laughs) admit to being witches go free and the people who deny they're murdering. I don't think (laughs) so. I I don't really know so much as like what the whole, I mean, there was other witch trials going on and I mean, you have to understand like the late 1600s, this is still a time where again, we as humans are just dumb. And so we're like, yes, the devil is fucking everything up. Yes. These women are witches and it's a very viable source of why that person's ill is because that bitch witch over there. There was, I mean, Salem again is like the most famous, but throughout Massachusetts and kind of the upper region, there did become kind of a witch hysteria 
witch hunt. Yeah. And what was just, the year for this again? Um, 1692. Yeah, so this is before we've even the, there's no declaration of independence no. for like uh, yeah, so this is this is the wild wild west of the wild wild <laughs> east. I'll take you to the yeah. wild wild east. <laughs> We're going east. to the wild wild yeah, east. There's, <laughs> there's like no there's no structure happening. Okay, that okay, that's okay. a good important thing to remember. <laughs> no structure at all. Thing. Like structure. yeah, yeah, it's just fucking anarchy. She's a witch. God, <laughs> what a time to be alive. No, thank you. <laughs> Like, this is what people are thinking of when they're like, we got to go back to the good old days where we could just murder people for being a witch. It, I think that's what people mean when they're like, what a horrible time this is right now to live. Like, all this bullshit and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. but I, back in the olden days, it was just so much more of a simple time. Yeah, of being murdered because you were accused <laughs> of being a fucking witch because your neighbor had fucking smallpox, you dumb shit. No, I choose 2022 every time. Even like- Yeah, we've talked I, about that. <laughs> I love, yeah, the 30s. I love the 40s. I'd love to go see them. The 50s has this like, uh, but even then I'm just like, uh, anesthesiology is better now. If I have a child, I'd like an epidural. Uh, Advil. I like Advil. Yeah. I, but there's just so many things. I can't even, I mean, God, cars are great. I like to go fast. Yeah, God, God forbid if time travel gave you a headache, you'd have no solution to fix it. You'd I don't even know when like, like well, ibuprofen <laughs> was invented, probably earlier than I think. But still, I'm not trying to drink Coca-Cola at a cute little soda shop that's actually laced with Coke. Like, I don't need yeah. that in my life. I'm already no, hyper I think that's enough. Fair. <laughs> Anyways, 2022. Yay. Thanks for having me. Okay. So Bridget Bishop gets hanged, hung, hung, hanged. She hung. Hmm, well, she hung. hung. And five more people were hung in July. Five more people were hung in August and eight more in September. So we are just like, wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. <sighs> That's kind of what's going on at the same. Throw back to another episode. Too. Back. I am just like <laughs> plugging all the previous episodes. We do have an episode on David Bowie. Please check it out. Uh, there were seven accused witches that did die in jail, and then one of the most famous and kind of most uh, is Giles Corey, who was the husband of accused Martha Corey. She was one of the earlier women. I didn't actually mention her that that got accused, and this is fucked up. Giles Corey accused i don't know if he was the one to first come out and accuse his wife or backed up people that accused her and he's like yes she is a witch later he gets accused that's right motherfucker you got it coming and he gets killed by being pressed to death so they would lay him on his Ooh. stomach and they put a Ooh. wooden plank on top of him and put on really heavy rocks and just kept adding it and you know what his last words were matt oh no what more wait what a really? sick fuck that's a pretty badass. That is badass. I heard that and I was like, damn, that is a way to go out. Like, way to be a boss. He probably was like, put more weight and put me out of my misery. Just kill me. He's like, just okay. fucking. That's like, probably actually that's more probably, accurate. But it's like, like when you're watching, it's when you're watching like one of those action movies and it's like, you know, like Arnold like punches the bad guy and you think he's going to die. And the guy's like, Zed, oh, you got pussy. <laughs> it like, really like makes me, like, I know. I do hope like, but, I mean. But I think it probably is way more what you were saying where he's just like, God, put more on and just crush my sternum. So this is over. I hope if I go out in some crazy way, which I'm knocking on wood right now, I hope I die when I'm 102 peacefully in my bed. That's right. I set my record 102. Challenge accepted. Yeah. All right. So so back to the innocent people that were murdered. <laughs> Lots of people died. Rocks on our back. But none of them were burned to the stake. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Let's talk about some of the tests they did to see if you were a witch. There's, there's only a few I have here. The swimming test is a great one. They would tie the opposite finger to the opposite toe and throw you in the lake. And if you floated... Flute, flute, float, fluted, floated, floated. I'll say float it. Float? I, I think float it. We all float down here. Um, if you float, then you were a witch. If you sank, then you were not, but you're probably going to drown. So that's a shitty – I. you know what? I was thinking about that though and I was like, I kind of want to tie my finger to my opposite toe and go in the pool and see if I can like – I think I could like swim out of that. I trust my free arm and leg – like, I don't think the people of Salem, I don't think the women of Salem were quite as athletic as I am. So they probably yeah. don't have the core strength. But I don't know. I was kind of uh, challenged by that test. The next one which was a, a witch cake. This one, I was like, oh, God, they would take the accused person's urine 
and mix it with like a rye flour and make a cake out of it. And then they would feed it to a dog. And if the dog then got the symptoms of the person, like of one of the other victims who were all like, bah! then the person was a witch. If the dog didn't, then they're like, I guess they're not. So urine cakes. And the reason they used dogs was because they believed dogs had a close association with the devil, which unfortunately leads me to that next little fact I have that dogs were not safe either. No. Dogs could be accused of witchcraft and two of them were executed in the witch hunt, um, one was shot and was claimed to be the devil. And then the reverend pointed out, oh, he wasn't the devil. The devil wouldn't have died. Like, you fucking assholes. Like, a dog? They are so mean. That's like the meanest thing you could do. Like, I know these women got killed. Like, boo-hoo. But I hate that shit right there. Isn't that awful? Because they believe that the dogs are little devils. I mean, sometimes, like, yeah, dogs can be little devils when they, like, shit in your living room. And you're like, fuck you. Why didn't you park it so you have to go out? But <laughs> then there was the touch test where if someone was having a fit, they would have the accused touch them. And if the fit stopped, they were a witch. And most of the time the fit did stop because if someone's, like, convulsing and you'd get touched, normally you kind of calm down for a second, I'm guessing. So these are really – I told you these people were dumb. These are dumb. Yeah. Dumb ideas. Um, and they did. They tortured them to confess. I know they tortured Tejuba a bit and she started saying crazy things about exactly in detail of the devil and the people. And, you know, I, you hit me hard enough. I will, again, it's that gun pointed at my head thing. I will start saying whatever I think you want me to hear. You yeah, people do you crazy are not things. The- and- you're not the person that we want to have like government secrets in that gets caught by no like, no i would enemy. love to think i'm a badass that will like take it to the grave and i'm like do it shoot me you can't break me oh you can break me you a hundred percent like i hate to be saying this out loud where people can find this around the world of me being on record saying you absolutely can break me and get me to do anything but hey at least imagine, i know my truth imagining you being <laughs> Imagining you being like Chunk and Goonies being interrogated by the Fatalis. Just like cries like, what do you need from me? I'll tell you everything. Yeah. And everyone's like, Gelsey, you're such a badass. And I'm like, am I though? I'm really sensitive and a really nice person. That's all a front. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Again, yeah. I think we all I'm, struggle with that. We all want to seem cooler than we are. I am not as cool as, as I put on to be. My Instagram is is sometimes I open it up and I'm like, this is a lie. I mean, it's a Who is yeah. this? <laughs> like that bad bitch. <laughs> Damn, she's intense. Not me. As I sit in my sweatpants and cry because I'm watching stupid movies. There's a theory of where these fits came from. I mean, I have my okay. – these girls are in puberty going through PMS thing, but they were actually like, you know – contorting, hallucinating, screaming. Um, So there's a theory that there was ergot poisoning, which is a fungus that affects rye grain. And that ergot was found around the Salem region at that time. And it causes the same symptoms as spasms, fits, hallucinations, vomiting. So there could have been an ergot fungal breakout, which was causing these girls to actually have these reactions. And then of course, because of the dumbass times it was, they were like, witchcraft, the devil. Because, you know, medically speaking, that uh, ha- like there couldn't be any other reason for that. But I think it's kind of cool that they later, I think it was like a 1972 me- journal, medical journal came out with that theory that was like, you know, we've been thinking. And I'm like, I'm glad you're dwelling over the fucking Salem witch trials. Can you cure cancer for fuck's sake? Like, what yeah. are you doing? This is 1972. <laughs> like, we're about to have a huge AIDS a- outbreak. Like, do you want to prepare for this? No? Yeah. Okay. Like, no, well, thank we, God we cracked really the case. On <laughs> Crack the case crack of Salem. Case. Zoinks. <laughs> like, fuck off. Okay. Anyways, so let's talk about the conclusion. People were starting to get skeptical and start kind of like realizing the ethically invalid moral of these codes, if that sentence makes sense. Um, and Governor Phipps was the one that dissolved the court. And uh, ironically, his wife got accused of being a witch and that's when he was oh, like whoa 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 we, oh, that's no weird. one touches no one touches the missus that is one person's bitch and she's mine you want to bet his his wife was actually truly a witch too and he's like oh no <laughs> they're gonna find <laughs> out yeah it's all fake this is ridiculous <laughs> so he started dwindling down and um by may of 1693 may phipps had pardoned and released all those in prison on witchcraft charges then in january 1697 the massachusetts general court declared a day of fasting for the tragedy of the salem witch trials so now they feel fucking guilty as shit 
like four years later. Um, the court deemed the trials unlawful and they publicly apologized. Samuel Sewell, um, the leading justice, Samuel Sewell, apologized publicly for his role in the process. But um, the damage, they say, in the community lingered even after they passed the legislation restoring the good names of the condemned and providing financial restitution to the heirs of the people that died, which is great. But it it's still like, I mean, to this day stays with you think of Salem and it's they're cursed. That's forever what they will be known for is this horrible, terrible time. Yeah. So they kind of just like slowly realized there were people that were kind of fighting against it the whole time. And then eventually they got the hold of it that were just like, y'all, this is stupid. And again, they tried to make up for the families, but yeah, it's a little late for that when they are dead. You, like yeah. good and then a day of fasting they're like oh we fucked up so we just won't eat for a day bitch that's what I do when I have a big event coming up and I want to look good in my dress that's not something you do to say sorry you killed somebody come on dropping straight facts over here on the before my time podcast hey oh maybe I'm a witch I already said I was What would you do if you had the ability to sync minds with your best friend? A partner? Maybe even a stranger? Would you share the deepest part of yourself with them? I can already read your mind. Then what am I thinking about right now? You're thinking about how much you want people to support our Kickstarter for our first feature film, Sync. You're so right. If we raise the money, we can make an amazing sci-fi thriller about mind syncing and toxic relationships. Support women in film and check out our campaign now. Just go to kickstarter.com and search SYNC, that's S-Y-N-C, or click on the link in our bio on social media and follow us at FemRegard and at SYNC the movie. Mmm, Fem. Kelsey, we had a lot of fun on this episode, despite the fact that we were talking about uh, the murder of innocent people for a large chunk of it. You know, I, that's you know me. You know how I roll. I cope <laughs> with uncomfortable feelings with humor and laughter. So the more I'm joking about something, the more I'm like, I'm not okay. Yeah, this is horrific. Um, so <gasps> let me ask you. Let's get a little lighthearted. I love to bring it back okay. to pop culture. Uh, I'll throw a little twist in this. We cannot include the Sanderson sisters. Oh my god! I already who, know the question, but go ahead. Who who is your favorite pop culture witch outside oh, of the Sanderson I have, sisters? It's a tie. I think it's a tie. Right. I thought you were going to ask me my favorite movie. Okay. Um, which I'll kind of mention that because okay, so I think I my favorite. I'm going to have to give it to Samantha from Bewitched because. As a teenager, I like binge watched Bewitched, and I loved the movie they remade with Will Ferrell and Nicole Kidman. I thought it was a great nod to the series and wh- how they did it I think was really smart and clever but I just love Samantha like I used to try to be just like her when I was a teenager and copy her wardrobe and all that and so that but I also my favorite witch movie which would be then my second two favorite witches is Practical Magic and that would be Sally and Jillian Owens who are I played by Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. I mean, what an amazing movie. And that was kind of like my sister minds movie because that the first time my parents showed us that movie, they were like, this reminds us of you girls because your our relationship was so tight like that. But I just I love that movie so much. All right. So what about you? I've got two confessions to make, first of all, which is that I've Have you never seen Practical Magic? I've never seen Practical Magic, nor have I ever watched an episode of Bewitched. Um, so, uh, two, things, two things I'll have to work on. I've been told by a bunch of people that I would love Practical Magic. So, Practical I, Magic is so fucking good. Like, Matt, please. It's Halloween season. It's like the best. I think it actually takes place in Salem. Or no, it's on the, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. You have to see it. It's just I a beautiful movie. I'll try to make that a priority. And then I can't believe you didn't mention what I think is probably my favorite witch, probably the scariest witch, and easily the most iconic witch of all time, the Wicked Witch of the West from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, but that's boring. It's just like she's got a green face and but you know what? She, it's just so typical. No, I, I wouldn't say that it's just the green face and the pointy hat. Like, yeah, she does hit all of the like witch beats for sure. But like... 
there's something about the uh, Margaret Hamilton's performance of just that voice is so like uncomfortable so much so that when she showed up on Sesame Street that episode was banned for like 50 years for how badly it scared the kids watching it. Are you it. serious? Yeah. Oh my God, that's actually amazing. But then I mean if we're going to go with like, you know, your your practical magic was my the craft. You know what I mean? Like I watched I've the never shit seen the craft. out of the craft. I'm trying to decide if you would like it or not. I mean, it's a 90s teen flick, so it's it's a cult classic. I know that. Yeah, you you've been pretty good friends with Black Widow, and she uh, has had to battle the Scarlet Witch a couple times, and that's another pretty top notch. Uh, modern day. I do like Scarlet Witch. That's true. I'm a little (laughs) bit in a like Marvel hiatus right now. I'm not going to lie. They just keep pumping shit out. And I'm like, I'm not in the mood. Like I'm on a, like we're on a break. Marvel and I are on a break. No, I think that's fair. I've said before that I, I like, I like most of the Marvel movies, but I do feel like, could we not just do like two a year? Like one in the, one in the, like one in the winter, one in the summer. Like we're getting one every like two months. Yeah, it's, it's too, too much. much. I did really like um, WandaVision, though. Speaking of Scarlet Witch, I loved WandaVision. Of course, I did because it I was going to say decades of sitcom. Like, duh, everyone's like, "Gelsey, of course you loved it." Like, in retrospect, we could have we could have legitimately just done an episode on WandaVision and all of its reference points. You know what I mean? Like, down, yeah, like, but we didn't. And here we, we didn't. Are. We didn't. Here we are. But you know what? I'm going to lock that in the back of my brain, though, just in case if if Scarlet Witch pops back up in the MCU, that might be a thing that we do and go, all right, we're going to rewatch WandaVision and talk about all of the. Yeah, but are we, though, are we going to rewatch WandaVision? Because Gelsey's probably not going to. I just thought of another movie that has a really cool witch. It's actually Michelle Pfeiffer, not Witches of Eastwick, which I also love. But um, have you seen Stardust? Yes. Stardust is very good. Yes, that's a good call. And the cast is incredible. Like Robert De Niro dancing around in drag. Like, why is this not? It was yeah, no. they, Claire they, Danes. Yeah, they did nothing to help that movie, unfortunately. But yes, it is a very good movie. All yeah. right. Well, Gelsey, if there's any other witch related uh, properties that we didn't talk about that everyone's like, hey, wow. talk about this. Where can mm-hmm. they go to tell us and remind us our, our failings? Yeah, remind me of um, our failings at Instagram. You can find us at Before My Time underscore podcast, or you can go over to Facebook and just type in Before My Time. We will pop up right on the wall, say, hey, you suck, you're great, whatever. I mean, you might make me cry, but <laughs> thus is life. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. If you're bored and want to give me a little five star rating and a good review, that just helps us reach more people like you, and I highly appreciate it. Don't forget to be nice to one another and don't accuse your neighbor as a witch. It's not a nice thing to do. Bye. Fuck it. That's the end. Okay. So, yeah. So. (laughs) You're listening to the Geekscape Network.